Um, happy Halloween and welcome to the Horror Nights Gauntlet. It is opening night of Halloween Horror Nights. We are at Stay and Scream. And this is the Halloween Horror Nights 31, what are we calling this? Instant. Instant reaction, reaction. something something. So tonight we're going to be doing a lot of like instant reactions to haunted houses. There will be some, no spoilers for the houses, but you will be seeing the scare zones tonight. I don't think we're going to make it to shows. We don't typically make it to shows on opening night, but um, sometimes not even opening weekend. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. If it happens, we'll, we'll try to give you a review, but uh, yeah, this is uh, opening night. I bet you thought this was going to be footage outside of the studio. And it is. Um, I'm really just here because... Shooting in the park was very outside of our comfort zone, and we were trying very hard to keep all of our thoughts at the end of each house very brief. So I'm really just here to kind of introduce each thing. Um, I think we kind of underspoke, honestly, in, in some cases. So just to kind of guide us along this, this little journey. So this is not a ranking of the houses or attractions. This is just kind of our opening night experience or our opening weekend experience and some of the thoughts that we had. We did not have media, so we did not shoot in any of the haunted houses, but we did film reactions for each house afterwards. So I'll kind of be just guiding us along the way as we kind of just map out our opening night evening as it happened. And then um, we'll be inserting some scare zone footage. We didn't actually shoot any reactions to scare zone, so I'll probably just put in our thoughts like here. And then uh, there will be chapter times in the descriptions. This is a completely no spoiler review apart from the uh, scare zone walkthroughs is more like a highlight of some scare zones. So if that is something you don't want to see, you should be able to look down and see the chapter times for our thoughts. And those will allow you to skip any possible spoilers. Otherwise, let's jump into it. I'm probably going to pop in and out. Uh, yeah. So we started our night in the New York Stay and Scream. And our first house was Spirits of the Coven. And let's jump back in time and see what we had to say about it. So, we just got out of Spirits of the Coven, first house of the night. What did you think? First house. It was fun. It was cute. It was, it cute. was, it was cute. Um, it maybe needs a little work. We'll it was, But it was really pretty. It was really pretty. Um, did you see the light up, like, the thing? You were a little ahead of me. So the light up thing. It was pretty. The light up there thing. There was a lot of light up things. It was very, like, you would you would view it and you would be like, the light up thing. That's true. Witches. Um, I don't know where this will fall for me. I don't either. I. But um, I'm I'm okay with it being the first house of the night. I'm excited to see. Like, I think this is a great first house of the, the night. Ho where yeah. the night goes. Um, I don't know if it's gonna like stay at my number one where my hype list was. We'll see. We'll see it's, what the it feels brings. about where I had it pre ranked. I don't know where you had it pre ranked. So I ended up doing this house uh, again on opening night, and then a couple more times over the course of the weekend, and. I will admit it did grow on me a bit since that first viewing, so I really like the way that the story progresses, especially m once I kind of started to figure it out a bit more. I really, like, I didn't quite understand the pig thing, and, like, to not spoil anything, uh, but that's starting to make more sense. I like the way that men are kind of incorporated into this house. I definitely like the the big witch. I think that's really cool. If anything that I'm actually disappointed about, it's that the sets can feel a little samey, but um, I like the way that the story evolves. It is just very subtle. And for a house about witches, I guess I kind of thought there would be more magic and like illusions. But I guess we'll kind of just see how that evolves over the course of the season. I mean, I don't think design is going to change. But yeah, we'll see how it how it changes, how it evolves. So up next is our first scare zone of the night. We went to Sweet Revenge. We did not actually record any reactions for the scare zones. We, we shot like one and then we like, I think we just got a little too drunk and forgot to record reactions for scare zones and then we got separated. And uh, so uh, I will just kind of be giving you my thoughts here. And then uh, Lauren just kind of did a comprehensive thought. So we'll, we'll get to her at the end of the episode and she'll share her thoughts on Sweet Revenge and everything else. Um, I really liked it. We didn't see much of the Scare Zones. It was a really busy weekend. We didn't even get to see the shows. As far as Sweet Revenge goes, I really liked the core characters. And there's some like big-headed characters that I thought were really cool. I would have liked to have seen maybe 
more use of the judge booth, but I might have just missed that. You know, it's still early in the season. I would definitely like to see more more miked characters. But I think this is a really great zone. It feels like Psycho Scarpy Unleashed. It feels like the schoolhouse. Um, it was exactly what I was expecting and what I wanted from it. Otherwise, so if uh, you don't want to see footage of the zone, uh, feel free to just skip ahead to the next section. Uh, but we're gonna, we have a little bit of footage of the scare zone for you. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god, I love him. Ah! Ah! After Sweet Revenge, we uh, took off to Halloween, and I guess I'll give you our initial thoughts. We just got out of Halloween. Lauren, what did you think? I loved it. Uh, it was okay. It was fine. It was Halloween. It was fine. It was I mean, okay. if you liked it, great. I, I didn't love it. We haven't even talked yet. Literally, we just got out of it. Um, I thought it was fine. It was okay. It was, it was perfectly okay. I... I don't. I, I don't even. I think I like. Tw it's 2014 remains unchallenged for me. Sorry. So I mean, like my initial thoughts, I didn't really like the house, uh, but I I saw it a few more times over the weekend, and it is growing on me. I'm not sure where it's going to land just yet. Like I said in the you know, in our hype episode, I have just seen Halloween at the event a lot, but I do think this house is kind of improving for me. Um, I really think the cast is fantastic. I love the scale of it. It feels very big. Uh, but at the same time, sometimes I feel like that may, might be to its detriment. I think some some rooms and scenes feel too big or they feel maybe a little sparse. So I, it's going to kind of be interesting to see how the house develops in that regards. After Halloween, we worked our way towards the opposite end of the park. So we kind of maneuvered around. We ended up at Scarecrow Cursed Soil. This zone is gorgeous. It's scary. It's, it feels like they learned the right lesson from Gorewood Forest and they're really embracing the like Central Park should be scary. Central Park is a haunted house. And they like took that concept with all the boo holes last year. And they've done boo holes before. I don't know. Last year with Gorewood felt very aggressive. This feels very aggressive. The barn just adds to that. I think some of the scarecrows themselves are just disgusting. There's this pig that's repulsive. The outhouse scare. Love it. Uh, we get... One of those uh, stretchy fences from Wicked Growth last year in the scare zone, that really took me by surprise. I, I was genuinely shocked by how much I loved this zone. I think it's beautiful. I think it's terrifying. Once again, we'll be playing some footage. If you are trying to avoid spoilers, feel free to just skip ahead. Otherwise, we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> So after Scarecrow, we got to the house that I'm sure you know I was probably the most excited for. <laughs> we kind of just went to go bum rush the weekend. This is also the only house that I got any like footage of the facade or anything of. So uh, I guess it's the one I cared about. <laughs> Oh, 
So we just got out of the weekend. It was great. I fucking loved it. Unbiasedly, like. No, so far I mean, I may be a little biased, but oh I, my god. I feel like it's unbiased. Like, I, it was really good. I mean, we're our whole group is dressed for this house. True. Uh, and the cast definitely saw and was buying into it, but we were buying. It was oh my god, the energy. It was good. It was good. Oh my god, I loved it. I loved it. it. Like we said coming out, loved this house. I feel like it's an experience that you don't really need to know anything to enjoy. You don't have to have seen the music videos. I mean, it is just very much surreal imagery. Uh, It doesn't even... It borrows very minimally from the music videos, honestly. But it helps if you have seen them, if you have done your homework. I still, if you have not... I highly recommend you check out at least all of the After Hours music videos, some of the performances, uh, and definitely the films that were recommended in the Entertainment Weekly article, which would have been A Clockwork Orange. You don't have to see the whole thing. If you've just seen the brainwashing scene, you get the idea. But maybe also Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, I would say, had a big impact on this. And to a lesser extent, also Jacob's Ladder. I could even see maybe elements of Chud. I could see elements of Relic. I could see Eyes Wide Shut for sure. And then, of course, all of the slashers. But but if you stick to those core three, I think you'll have like a very like clear aesthetic understanding of what's going on in this haunted house because it is very abstract and very minimalist, yet at the same time, very maximalist. <laughs> it feels very much like a fun house like a funhouse mirrors and crazy lights. Our, our friend Jess from uh, our friends over at HHN 365 said, it felt like if Orlando did a Hollywood house and I can't unsee that. It, it is like kind of all the best things of like my favorite Hollywood houses, the, the more fun and kind of ridiculous ones. It has sort of like this uh, aggressive, gory, but kind of cheesy angle to it that I think just like works really well. It's very sleazy. I, I love it. Toads, man. After the weekend, we hit Universal Monsters Legends Collide. You can definitely tell, I think, in our reviews for the weekend and for this this one coming up, it was probably the peak point for us in terms of how lit we got that night. It's definitely like we're at like the most aggressive point of the evening and definitely the most energetic. Yeah, well, I guess I'll let you see. Okay, okay um, we just got out of Legends Collide. Uh, what did you think, Lauren? It was okay. See, I really liked it. I did like it. Um, I think it might be so far under weekend, but above everything else. I was gonna say this. I mean, we're we're on our. This was must have been our fourth house. Yeah. This was my second favorite so far after weekend. I I loved it. It was what I wanted, which was a mummy house with a little bit of Dracula and, and the Wolfman sprinkled in. But if you wanted those other two characters, I get why you might be disappointed. Yeah. But it is very it's very much just like basically a mummy house. It is definitely a mummy house. I thought it was beautiful. The sets were stunning. The lighting for some of the moments were really beautiful. And I feel like it is important to know the story before you go yeah. in. So less cohesive than like Bride's. It definitely does not communicate its story the way that Bride did. Yeah. So I would say I would I would agree that it's definitely a weaker storytelling, but yeah. it's definitely it's as still, beautiful. It's still great. It's still yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, no, I I feel like the two houses over here have been like I've walked out, like, very hyped, where the first two I was not sure how I felt. This time I was like, yeah, I had a really good time. So I'm happy so far. You know, like we said, it is, this is a mummy house, first and foremost. Um, But what I did get to see as the weekend evolved was definitely more Dracula, more Wolfman. Um, And then the ending is really cool. It does change. So that, that also kind of really improved my perception of this house. Um, I think it's beautiful, though, and uh, really just kind of feels like everything I really wanted from a mummy house with just a couple other monsters sprinkled in. So I'm I'm really in love with this house. I think the energy of the cast is fantastic. I think some of the special effects are really beautiful. It may not be at the number one spot that I had uh, had kind of thought it would be during hype, but it, it man, it is a really good haunted house, and it it's really it's really cool. I really I really love it. So after Legends Collide, we worked our way around to Descendants of Destruction. Well, we just got out of Descendants of Destruction. Yes. What did you think? I really liked it. It was a, it was really cool set. The sets were beautiful. If if you don't know what's going on, God help you. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, But yeah, no, the sets and the costumes are really beautiful. Definitely hit that like apocalyptic thing. I can definitely see where people were like, 
Is this the secret Last of Us house? It was really pretty. I really liked it. Yeah, it was really pretty. I really liked the, uh, the like, day glow in the end. Oh, yeah, the finale, the, like, third act. It definitely, like, it escalates aesthetically, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. So to add to, my, to our thoughts, because uh, we didn't say a lot, this house was surprisingly subdued. I, I guess I was really expecting, I don't know, since it has that human element that Seeds of D- seeds of Extinction did not have, I guess I was maybe expecting something more, like, viscerally aggressive. And it, it is, but it still had that very, like, quiet, creepy vibe, which I, I actually really appreciated about this house. Um, it's definitely giving Mad Max vibes, and because of that, it almost feels like Seeds of Extinction was fused maybe with Survivor Die, from uh, 2016, I could definitely see a lot of that, those mixed aesthetics. I've been hearing that this... Beforehand, we were hearing this as a sequel to Seeds of Extinction, or it was a prequel. Now we're hearing them call it a cousin to Seeds of Extinction. Uh, there's definitely evidence throughout the house that it, it is maybe set in that same world. I'm really curious to see how this develops. I love the way that the story kind of progresses. It definitely has a three-act structure. I think it's a really cool house and one to watch out for. I could absolutely see this kind of climbing up the ranks. Uh, So far, it's kind of in the middle of the pack for me, but I really like it. So next up, we took the insane (laughs) hike over to Bugs Eaten Alive. This was a nightmare. It was insane that night, too. It was really crowded. And uh, we ended up waiting in the express line for, like, 45 minutes. And they were... were, The person working the merge point was just letting both both lines just walk past him. There was no stopping, stop and go. It was just an absolute clusterfuck. So I, this was definitely the point where people in our group started to drop like flies. I know my fiance dipped out right before this one. Uh, Two more of our friends dipped out right after. So let's jump to our thoughts. (laughs) We just came out of Bugs. Lauren. Not as bad as I was like thinking it might be. It was I fucking fine. loved it. I loved it. I the the bitch at the beginning. Oh, oh my god. That was crazy. The aesthetic, the showroom vibe, 1950s. The, I loved it. Yeah. But it's definitely not gonna be for everybody. But I loved it. Yeah. So we did. We didn't say a lot. I I wish we had said more. But I I think the exhaustion was definitely clearly starting to kick in. As far like I loved this house. I think it's spectacular. And as I've seen it more and more over the weekend and. I'm I'm really just falling in love with it. I think this is one of the the top contenders, like easily in my top four. The 1950s vibe is spectacular. The House of the Future vibe is giving it's giving Mask of the Phantasm. It's giving Tomorrowland. It's giving Fido. It's giving Leave It to Cleaver. Like it feels like classic Halloween Horror Nights in this house. It's goofy as shit. I, I don't think it's scary at all, but I think it is so much fun. Really, just a very spectacular experience. And I see myself just falling more and more in love with this one. We finally have another scare zone to talk about. Um, uh, After Bugs, we hit Conjure the Dark. I will fully admit I have not spent enough time in this zone. What I have seen of this scare zone, I really like. First of all, they finally gave San Francisco some room to breathe. I think the Lair of the Banshee caves that they've been using it like just about every year since they created them, uh, those work perfectly. You do like you, this area is too small to support giant stages. One giant stage pushed back is perfect. For once, I finally feel like they've figured out San Francisco. I think this zone is great. I think the characters are all cohesive. I think the demons are simultaneously beautiful to look at, but also beautiful to look at. Wow. Um, but then, like, the orcs are incredible. Um, and then, if I had any complaint, I wish that the main sorceress was the same design as the head bitch in charge in Spirits of the Coven. Like, can you imagine? Like, if, like, the synergy? Missed opportunity. Like, Anyway, it's it's not. But that is no shade to the actresses who are playing the head sorceress in Spirits of the Coven. I just, you know, I, the idea was in my brain and now I can't stop thinking about it. I wish it was like the same costume. She is serving the house down. She's doing all the ooh-wahs, you know. She's doing the woo-woos. Uh, and it is a good time. Um, I fully could see this zone ending up like topping a lot of lists this year, I think. I haven't gotten to see much of it. 
But I, I could definitely see this rising very high for me. I think there is a lot of fun to be had in this area. I think the set pieces, the new set pieces are really beautiful. Not just the stage, but also the, uh, the like, Stonehenge sacrifice altar things on the side. Those are really cool. I'm, I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far. We do have some footage for you. It's not a lot. I'm sorry. We, we didn't spend much time in this zone, to be, to be frank. But uh, if you want to skip, like we've been saying, just check the chapter times in the description box and you can skip ahead. So after Conjure the Dark, we made our way to the horrors of Blumhouse. This was the point that two more members of our group decided they were out. And so it ended up just being me and Lauren and two more of our friends. So we went from seven to four. This queue was a nightmare as well. We, uh, I, I don't know that my first impression was very positive because of the exhaustion, the waiting. But yeah, let's let's get into the horrors of Blumhouse. Well, uh, we just got out of the horrors of Blumhouse, yeah. Lauren? It was good. Um, I didn't hate it. It was okay. It was okay. I, I'm a little disappointed with the black phone, but... Uh... I. It's very abrupt, the shift. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very, very jarring. But it um, be interesting to see how that evolves. So, I mean, to add to my thoughts from before, I... Especially as now that I've seen more of it, I also think this kind of feels like a Hollywood house in that there are a lot of black hallways. I'm not going to say that Orlando does them better. I, I hate black hallways pretty much in any circumstance. So don't think there's a bias in this situation. I think that that middle part, the transition from uh, from Freaky to Blumhouse is is bad. It's uh, maybe bad show. Like I don't I I don't have much nice to say about that. I th I think that could have been themed and it should have been themed. As far as the two houses themselves, I think they're cute. I think they're fun. I love both of these movies. I definitely I, there are things that I wish had made it into at least into Freaky that I really liked in the movie that didn't make it into the haunted house, and then things that did make it into the haunted house that I kind of wish had just been executed a little differently. And I guess I could say the same thing for the Black Phone, but the Black Phone, I felt like, with Freaky, I felt like I got, like, two-thirds of a haunted house. Black Phone, I feel like I got the whole house. You know, I feel like I was in a full-length house. So I will give this house real points for really feeling like we got a secret 11th house added to the list. It really did feel like two haunted houses. The cast, absolutely on point. I'm j I'm very curious to see where this lands because I'm seeing it at the top of lists. I'm seeing it at the bottom. I'm seeing it at the middle. It feels like no one can agree. And I'm not even really sure where I feel about it right now, but I look forward to doing it again at least. So Lauren left me after <laughs> Horrors of Blumhouse, which I get. It was, it was a brutal night. We were in those weekend red jackets, red blazers. It was hot. Some of us in our group were in jeans. I think everyone was heat exhausted, just normal exhausted headaches. So Lauren dipped. I decided to finish the night. Um, so next up, we have uh, The Horrors of Halloween, which I loved the aesthetic of this, especially at night. I was not sure how I was going to feel about it beforehand. I, I still don't really love the look of the pumpkins on the metal trusses. I, I think that the they kind of just make straight lines. and I wish they were dispersed a little bit more organically but you know what what can you do i will say there are a lot of older characters from the event in this zone that i was not expecting like i i definitely saw a succubus from like 2003 who she was also you would have seen her last year in 30 years 30 fears so i really was kind of hoping for more classic halloween things more pumpkins more to maybe see we, we got some of the characters from the other scare zones. I guess I was just expecting more of that. And it feels a little understaffed. So I hope that this zone fleshes itself out. The Pumpkin Lord, phenomenal. Beautiful. Uh, the redesign, I love it. The new horns, I love it. I think he's fantastic. I love all of the, like, his hand motions are so bitchy. He really, is just, like, he'll, he'll constantly just be folding his hands and looking like he's just ready to fucking read you for filth. Like, 
I love him. If anything, I just wish that they had let, like, a mic'd actor take control of this character and really let loose. Because the character is so fun. Everything that we thought we knew about the Pumpkin Lord in the Haunted House, you know, it was he just kind of had the same trigger, you know, the I am Halloween over and over again. And getting to see him, like, have, like, a set of, like, you know, a dozen or so different triggers and sayings. And the personality these actors have given him is so cunty. And I love it. Like, he's easily becoming one of my favorite icons. I, I think he's spectacular. But yeah, we so we have a little bit of footage of, of Horrors of Halloween. So we'll jump into that. At this point, you know what to do if you don't want to see spoilers. <laughs> what do you think of this night, Hamkins? Terrifying, isn't it? <laughs> We got another scare zone. Uh, I just kind of worked my way straight over to uh, Graveyard, Deadly Unrest. I did this one alone as well. I think this zone is beautiful. I love sleep and death. I love that. I love their little conversation that they're having while you're in the zone. I think that is deliciously camp in a... Uh, <laughs> it, it feels it, it feels very classic Halloween Horror Nights. I love their big ass Phantom of the Opera Mask of the Red Death masks. I love their wings. I love that sleep has a sword and death has a scythe. I l- love the two of them. They're spectacular. The rest of the cast, it's the aesthetic is so weird to me for this zone. Uh, but I'm I'm very much enjoying the cast itself and the energy they're bringing. We've got everything from business suits to little girls in like The Shining to big white billowy shoulder ghosts. It's I have no idea what the aesthetic is going on, um, and I don't know if that was intentional. I I feel like I should hate this zone, but I I fucking love it. I think it's ridiculous. Um, We've got a little bit of footage for this one, so uh, this is the last scare zone. If you don't know what to do at this point, I'm sorry. So like I said, Lauren left the group after Blumhouse. I did do Chupacabra with two two friends of mine who also left like right after that. And then I ended up meeting up with some other people. For the sake of ease, I just kind of recorded all of my reactions all at once. And then uh, I asked Lauren to record her reactions kind of all at once the next night once she did them. So we'll just kind of be jumping right into kind of my bam, bam, bam thoughts. And then I'll give you Lauren's as well. So we'll be right back. So Lauren had to dip out. Uh, she was not feeling great. Uh, so she went home after Blum House. Uh, so I decided to go finish the rest of the houses on my own and I ended up running into some friends. So it kind of worked out. Uh, so I'm just kind of going to review everything kind of all at once right now. So we went and did Chupacabra. That was beautiful. It was like if American Werewolf in London were an original house set in Latin America beautiful. The costumes, the execution of certain scares were incredible. Uh, I then decided to do Hellblock with my with my buddy Justin. Hellblock was certainly a haunted house. The scenic team did so much with, with what they were given and 
the sets really are beautiful. The experience is, it's interesting. It was definitely fun to look for like certain characters. I enjoyed that for that. As for Dead Man's Pier, oh my God. I take back everything I said <laughs> about it being sad. Uh, I don't know why I let that affect my hype because it is beautiful. Uh, it is, I, I, I'm speechless. Dead Man's Pier is so incredible, so beautiful. It felt like an episode of Scooby-Doo. It felt like The Fog. It felt like The Forsaken. It felt like Ghost Ship. It felt, it, it scratched, it felt like Bioshock, my God. It scratched this itch that I knew I needed scratched and I hoped that this house could scratch it and it's, oh my God, it just so beautiful. So um, we will be here all weekend. Um, obviously we are not posting this during opening weekend, but Lauren is going to experience the remaining three houses tomorrow and I'll be cutting in her opinions about them uh, right after this. So uh, we'll just take it to Lauren. Okay, so I ditched Dakota, but I stole his fiance. <laughs> um, so my reaction for the three houses that I did not do yesterday, um, Dead Man's Pier was absolutely beautiful, amazing. Definitely my favorite, hands down, so far. I mean, we'll see if it changes throughout the season, but first impressions, like, you can't beat that. Um, Chupacabra, also beautiful, spectacular. I would love a, a Chupi plushie. What else was, oh, I was like, what was the third one? Fucking Hellblock Horror. <laughs> um, it felt very hollow scream, just like a lot of chain leak fence. Oh yeah, it was all chain leak fence. <laughs> and not too much going on. I mean, it was okay, I didn't hate it. I'm trying to go through all the houses in my head, I don't think I would say I hate any of them. Like, I still think they're all pretty decent houses. I just clearly have favorites. Some Just some additional thoughts. Chupacabra makes such a strong case to bring an international cultural horror every season. Uh, I know Hollywood has been doing Mexican folklore and Latin American folklore for years now, off and on. Uh, out in, in Halloween Horror Night Singapore, I know that event, at least one house every year will be dedicated to something in Southeast Asia from their folklore, different urban legends or myths or uh, demons or ghosts, some, just something from the culture. I would love to see Orlando take this achievement with the legend of Chupacabra and with Fiesta de Chupacabras, what they've done with it, and continue that trend. I think this is a really great jumping off point and I'd like to uh, see more of that. So Chupacabra, beautiful house. If you haven't listened to it, listen to the Discover Universal podcast's story for it because it's beautiful and endeared me to the story even more so. Um, great haunted house. Hellblock? I know I ripped it a new one <laughs> and I know everyone is, but I want to say I saw it again a couple times this weekend and it is improving and there are rumors that they are adding more things to the house as it goes on. They didn't have a lot of time, so I, I didn't really get to elaborate on that in my review the night of, but I do feel like it's worth it to know that this house had a lot working against it and I think the cast is doing the most. I think the scenic team did an outstanding job of transforming it into a prison in the space of just a couple of weeks, I, uh, I'm i very curious to see where this lands. And honestly, there is not a bad house this season. I, I'm really excited to see where this house goes and to see how they can evolve it. It was really fun to get to see some of those older characters in this very ridiculous Supermax for Monsters concept. So I, I'm excited. As for Dead Man's Pier, I don't know what more I can say. It's a masterpiece. It literally, it's, it's perfection. It is a perfect haunted house. It is so beautiful. It is a perfect ghost story. They have taken they've taken so many elements that from ghost town to to dead waters to every from to the scare zone is based on to dead man's wharf. Um and the fog and the forsaken and all of these influences shadow over Innsmouth like 
all of these elements are just working together to create this beautiful, mournful, terrifying experience that is just perfection. I I would be shocked if this doesn't close out my season at the top of the list. It is just an absolutely stunning haunted house. That said, unlike Chupacabra, I will say I was a little annoyed with the Universal podcast playing the Blake Braswell story, uh, Fisherman Sonata, that he wrote for the 2020 season to talk about Dead Man's Wharf, only because I feel like it's confusing a lot of people. Uh, it focuses on a girl named Sophia, who is a violinist, and she meets a sea captain who turns out to be a ghost, and all of the ghosts come in, and she wants to get rid of her violin, and she ends up surviving the story. It's set in modern times, and I'm seeing a lot of people take that story and assume that it's talking about the ghost violinist in the Dead Man's Pier House, and I don't think the timeline really works out for that to make any kind of sense. So I would really like to know more about the backstory for this house, because I think the world building that is visible, the statue in the courtyard, to the name of the pub, to the ghost at the end, also just the sense of space and scale is just immaculate world building. This is this is an absolute magnum opus of a haunted house. Like, I just think this is magnificent. And then before we close it out, um, Lauren did want to share some final thoughts on the scare zones that she recorded, I think this afternoon, uh, and sent over to me. So we'll play those and we'll be right back. So forgot to talk about the zones when we were at the event last weekend. Uh, but I really enjoyed all of the zones. Uh, they were all very thematically cohesive. I really am enjoying the, uh, the story of 31, um, and the, that classic Halloween feeling. The costume design, phenomenal. I, I, and makeup, I love, love, love the makeup in Graveyard, um, specifically, and I love the costumes throughout. Uh, Sweet Revenge music sets a really great scene. Uh, Scarecrow is scary. Um, it's 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 all really good. I do love that there's a show in Conjure the Dark, and Horrors of Halloween is really nice to get like the Pumpkin Lord coming in, and then seeing how it ties in with all of the other zones. So I can't say that I didn't enjoy everything that I've seen this year so far. Um, it's a very strong year. I'm very excited to see how my thoughts and feelings will progress throughout the season. Usually always does. Um, but overall, very strong weekend. Really, really liked the zones. So that is our opening weekend thoughts. I know I can speak for myself, but also on behalf of Lauren, to thank you to everyone who stopped us in the streets this weekend. Uh, it was wonderful meeting so many of you, seeing old friends, making new friends. If we had a drink together, you know what's up. <laughs> um, it was uh, really wonderful to see all of you, to get to run some houses with some of you. And as the season goes on, I really look forward to getting to meet and know more of you. If you have been to the event, what do you think so far? Uh, let us know. Uh, do you have a ranking yet? I, I, kinda, I have one that's kind of in the works, but it's not ready to go just yet. Uh, but I would love to hear what you think of the event so far. Do you have a do you have a favorite house? Do you have a least favorite house? Uh, did you see the shows? We didn't see the shows. Uh, we'll be seeing those this weekend, hopefully. And um, yeah, let us know down below. Comment, like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, do all the little algorithm magic for us, and we will uh, we will see you guys very soon with some more fun things for the Halloween Horror Nights 31 season. Otherwise, my name is Dakota. Uh, my co-host has been Lauren. Otherwise, thank you so much for uh, watching the Horror Nights Gauntlet only on Cathode Coaster. Mm -hmm.